Hi, thank you for joining us today. My name is Rebecca. I'm a video editor here at NBUC. We have online hosts ready to answer any of your questions today. Hi, thank you for joining us today. My name is Rebecca. I'm a video editor here at NBUC. We have online hosts ready to answer any of your questions today. Well, good morning, everyone. It is so good to be together in worship today. I can't wait to get started. Just wanted to let you know that kids and their families are invited to join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. for our family praise party, where we get together to share God's big story of love, which is your story, too. We share some music, play a fun game. It is a wonderful time to be together. If you're looking for more information on our program for kids and families, please check out our Facebook page, which is NBU Church Young Families. It's a closed group, but we will love to add you to the group so that you can get updates and inspiration, all kinds of stuff throughout the week. Also, every day, every weekday, we have a check-in time at 2 o'clock, uh, a live Zoom call so we can interact with one another, kids can see their friends, and we can share inspiration in what we're working on. Can't wait to connect with you there. See you soon.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Church Online. We're so glad you've joined us today. We want to invite you to share this with people so that we have lots of people worshiping with us today. It's a very special service today. Um, we're talking about stories of transformation, and it's it's kind of different. We've, we've finished our Unsung Hero stories and that series, and now we're moving on to a really exciting um, sort of standalone Sunday, but it, it's, it makes it kind of fun and interesting. And uh, we want to share that with as many people as possible um, right now. So we invite you to share it now and hope that lots of people join us for the journey today. I think we're going to be really inspired by some of the stories that we're going to hear today. Real people sharing the ways that God is making a difference in their lives, how Jesus is transforming them, how they're experiencing new life in the Holy Spirit. That's our prayer for you, for us, for all of us today that we would experience that. And and uh, we have a scripture that kind of helps us enter into that possibility, that promise that God has for us. Today. Yeah, so, so today we're gonna be looking at Romans 12, verses one to two. And this is where the Apostle Paul writes this as he encourages the early church in Rome. He says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Love it. Let's get ready to be transformed, to worship God today, to recognize how big God is, how beautiful God is, how faithful God is. So we invite you to sing with us as we as we enter into worship, into singing now. You can turn up the volume, you can stand up, you can sing loud and let us worship God together and get ready to be transformed by the love of Jesus.
Friends, let's, let's pray as we continue to worship together. Let us pray. Loving and, and gracious God, we, we thank you. We raise a hallelujah. We, we, we give you praise and, and thanks for the amazing God that you are, that we can, you can enable us to sing even in the middle of a storm, even, even through COVID, something has as, 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 as such a huge impact on our lives in this world. We can still sing your praises. We can still feel your presence. And we thank you for that, that your hope continues to rise up in and among and through us. And so we entrust this time of worship to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so today we've got lots going on. Very different Sunday, stories of transformation. We also have a baptism today, which is really exciting. Our first one since COVID. And we're so excited to be able to do this today and really looking forward to, uh, you know, how people are being transformed through baptisms and how this family is going to be blessed by that. We also have communion coming up today. Debbie will be leading us through a beautiful communion time. So we want to invite you now to either be thinking about your your elements, what you want to bring in, or go and get them to have them ready on hand for when that time comes in the service. Um, but yeah, lots going on today, and we're really excited that you're here to join us for yeah, it. Yeah, there sure is lots going on. It's a very different day. It's, it's Labor Day Sunday, and again, we're, we're, we're excited to hear these stories of transformation, experience that together, that, that Romans 12, be transformed by God's love. That's so real for us as we celebrate today. As we uh, as we come together, I also want to recognize that maybe maybe you are um, new to, to the NBC community, or maybe you've been around for a long time, but you're not sure how to connect. Please just we invite you to go to our our website um, nbuc.ca/welcome, and on that page you'll be able to fill out um, a, a page that will help us connect with you. Maybe you want to get our weekly email so you know what's going on. Maybe you want to sign up for a small group. Lots of ways to connect there. Just invite you to go to that uh, now if that's helpful. Yeah. We also want to move into a time of offering today and recognize that um, all of what we have comes from God and that we have the opportunity to give back to his community and to be his light in the world. And we so appreciate anything that you have been able to give over these struggling times. And even now, um, we really appreciate anything um, that people can, can help support so we can support these ministries and be God's hands and feet in the world today. Um, so we want to direct you to nbuc.ca slash give if you're feeling called to give today throughout the service or throughout this week. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a great way for us to live into the vision that God has given us. Imagine God building better lives, better families, a better Brampton and beyond. We yeah, do. Yeah, I mean, talking about transformation, like seeing people transform, but also we have the ability to transform this community mm -hmm. and, and Brampton and beyond. Yeah. yeah. And and part of that comes from the generosity that you guys have been able to, to help us with. and and us too yeah, yeah absolutely so thank you so much for being a part of that and let's continue to to worship god now with our offering and with this next song good morning everyone thank you so much for worshiping with us today before we move on to our next song i just want to acknowledge that we know it's hard to worship online we know it's so different not being with our community and in our congregation and worshiping in the sanctuary together but I just want to remind us all today that worship knows no boundaries. It's all about aligning our hearts with God's, and we can do that from wherever we are. Today, I want to invite you all to close your eyes and sing this song with us no matter where you are. And imagine that you're here with us worshiping together. I want you to listen to these words of this song and find what resonates with you as we sing about a God who we love and adore and who loves us back unconditionally. Please sing with us. Old things have passed away Your love has stayed the constant grace remains the cornerstone things that we thought were dead are breathing in life again you cause your Shine on darkest nights For all that you've done We will pour out our love This will be our anthem song Jesus, we love you Oh
Good morning, my name is Dwayne, and I'm going to act as a bit of a host to go through three different stories where God has been transforming from three different approaches. You will see from a young person, uh, from a young family, uh, and uh, also from, uh, from someone who has experienced God in a very powerful way through Alpha. You're going to hear from three different uh, perspectives. Um, but all had an, an, a significant encounter with God. So buckle up. Here we go. Our first story is from Rebecca uh, and how what she has been reading and uh, what uh, her life choices have been have drawn her closer to God. Well, a story of transformation in my life is when I first accepted Christ, I was having the mindset that, you know, I have to do these things. I have to read my Bible. I have to perform well in order for God to, you know, be happy with me and for me to be in good standings with him. And a couple months ago, um, a friend suggested me this book called Living the Christ-Centered Life. And in that book, it showed the difference between justification and sanctification. And that book completely changed my view on my relationship with Christ because my view was from a work-based, you know, relationship that if I do this, then God is happy. Or, and if, if I say this, then God is happy. But not, it, wasn't, it wasn't faith that I was having, but it was based on how I was performing. And sometimes I still struggle with it. Um, but that book really changed my perspective in saying that um, you're already justified by what Christ did on the cross. That action that Jesus did on the cross is your justification. And you're not justified based on your works, but you're justified based on what he's done already. And so when you accept Christ into your life, you're already justified. And then when you're justified, you go into the process of sanctification. And reading that book and having that revelation to me that, okay, um, I messed up. That doesn't mean that I'm not, no longer justified. It doesn't mean that I'm no longer in the family of Christ. It just means that, you know, God is going to show me his grace. 
And having that revelation, like I mentioned, completely changed my view on my relationship with him. It made me less um, hard on myself because I was able to completely rely on, you know, God's grace. And like I said, it's still a struggle. I still struggle with reminding myself that through Jesus and him only I'm justified and not by my performance because I'm not God. (laughs) And so um, that's definitely a a time, a period in my life where I felt like I was transformed. My, My perspective was transformed by the gospel and by Jesus. And um, I'm just so grateful that I'm able to be in an environment here at NBUC that allows me to use my talents. Since I went to school for journalism and we learned how to edit videos and shoot videos and everything. And um, my fiance sent me a link of um, NB, a, a church that's hiring a video editor. And that was the time where I was looking for a new job. And he convinced me, he's actually the one that convinced me to apply. And so I applied um, because it was something that I went to school for. um, And it was in a church. So it was the best of both worlds. So this environment and working here at NBUC has allowed me to use my talents for Christ, um, but also be in a faith-based environment. And that makes all the difference because, you know, when I first started, he told Lord, the Lord told me, you know, you're not working for men, you're working for me. So work at it with your full heart. And that just changed the way that I did things at work. I didn't feel like I had to impress anyone. I didn't feel like I needed to do this for someone. But my perspective was I'm doing this for God. Um, so it's amazing to be in an environment where I'm able to use my talents and also, you know, praise God. Story of transformation. Well, hello. I'm here with uh, Emilio and Debbie uh, to record another uh, a personal story of transformation. We're so excited about all that God is doing. So we're going to jump right in. Um, so if you wouldn't mind telling me a little bit about uh, your faith development over the last uh, little while. Okay, not a problem. Um, I'll start. Hello, everybody. My name is Emilio. Um, so basically what you should know about me is that um, I was raised Roman Catholic and um, I went through all the sacraments. Uh, you know, I, I went through everything that I'm you know, supposed to do. Um, however, um, we can discuss this another time, maybe over a beer or something uh, or whatever your, whatever your poison is, uh, Pepsi, whatever, Perrier. We could sit down and talk about um, my feelings on that. Uh, maybe now is not the, the time. Uh, but anyway, I, I I wasn't getting what I needed to get out of the Catholic Church, um, right. unfortunately, for myself. Um, so uh, some friends of ours uh, introduced us to NBUC, and I liked what I saw there. And it's been about, uh, it's been about yeah, four or five years since we've been members of uh, NBUC. Um, also, during that time, uh, we've had two two little ones. So we've got a five-year-old and a two-year-old. And it's been tough. It's been very tough. Um, as, as you know, as many of you, yeah. many of you out there know, um, just trying to balance everything out has been tough. I mean, my faith uh, has grown uh, exponentially stronger. Um, just having the kids and uh, you know, just loving them and, and, and thanking God for them every day. Um, you know, but to be honest, uh, 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 I'm still trying to find the balance, the correct balance between family and and, and basically everything else. You know, yeah. I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. 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 And yeah. uh, Debbie, what about you? It, pretty much the same. Although I've had some other experiences that have um, made my heart and my mind more focused um, with God, um, you know, just with a personal experience that I've had um, with a prayer group with some friends, and uh, just the experience after we, we we finished our prayer meeting with a prayer for one of our members, and it happened to be me that day, and from that day forward, I. I 
totally felt that I met God. I don't know how else to say it, but yeah. I just made that connection with him. And, you know, it was from that day forward, I felt like a weight was lifted off me. And, um, you know, I was able to, to connect with him, you know, and as Emilio said, you know, we prayed and we prayed to have children and we were blessed and, and just, you know, it's not an excuse, but the busy lifetime, you know, it would be nice to, you know, attend church more, but, you know, with raising the kids, it's, it's become difficult, but in our heart, we, we keep the love of God with us. And we try to instill that with our kids today. You know, although the coronavirus came and we can't still go to church, um, you know, we pray with the kids and we just really want them to follow those footsteps as well. That's great. So what is, uh, why is this whole idea of faith so important to you both? You know, for myself, Dwayne, um, I mean, let's face it, as much as I'd like to believe I'm going to live forever and, 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 and I'm something special, uh, you know, I, the truth is, is that, uh, you know, although, yes, we are all special, um, I have no power, no control, and um, it gives me, it gives me hope, it gives me strength, it gives me um, uh, just, just uh, a, a sense of, 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 of wellness, knowing that Christ is Lord, and that, you um, Christ is Lord and that there is that reassurance. There really is that reassurance for, for us, for, for our loved ones, for ourselves, for, uh, for everyone that, uh, we will be, um, we will be under God's, under Christ's guidance, you know, under Christ's wing. Yeah. And, and for our kids mostly like for us, yes, as a family, as a couple, but just, just for our children so that they can lead a loving you know, blessed life. And that's what we, that's what we live for. We live for God and we live for our children. We live for our family and we just want the best for them. And we want them to follow in those footsteps as well and be, be just well-rounded people and just never forget that there's the almighty one up there that, that provides everything for us. Yeah. yeah that is a life changing perspective, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So as you're thinking about uh, next steps and, and going deeper in your faith and your life together and your life as parents. Um, what have you been thinking about? What, are, what is the, the, the bigger plan for you? I mean, bigger plan is for us to become more involved and to, to, to become part of a, a community. We know the community is there. Uh, we like the community. Now it's just a matter of, 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 you know, kind of uh, uh, balancing things out, like I said earlier, just making sure that that we can we can do both. Uh, because right now it's a little challenging. Oh, I also had a, an accident uh, uh, last last year. I, I slipped on ice and um, I, I I broke my 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 ankle in two two different spots. It was broken, fractured, surgery. It's I'm still doing physio for it. Wow. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of things that, that have been going on in the last little while. So in the future, Dwayne, I'm hoping that we can, we can connect more with um, like, like minded individuals and just, uh, just be a part of, uh, a, a we want to show our kids that there are people out there that, that are like minded individuals like ourselves. Yeah. 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 yeah and at the beginning, you know, when we had children, the obstacle was, you know, getting out of the house and, and figuring out how to be a parent and how to involve ourselves with the church. Um, you know, it, it became a little bit of an obstacle, but time has passed. Our first, she's a little bit older and she understands, you know, and I think she would appreciate the experience of, of going, you know, to church, sitting down, being with nice people, being with you know, godly people and, and just experiencing it. The little one may be a bit of a challenge to keep quiet, <laughs> but nevertheless, you know, it would be a good experience for her. <laughs> well, if it's any consolation, uh, my mother always uh, prayed um, for me to be all boy. So mm -hmm. when it comes to being noisy and unruly, 
Uh, I'm the poster child, so there is always hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we have some noisy girls, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I love it. Now, uh, I guess I just wanted to end with uh, one last uh, one last question. Um, uh, how is faith changing your day-to-day -day lives? Well, I think when I look at what's going on right now um, in the world, and um, you know, I think faith is is been more important than ever, uh, especially right now. Um, just you know, praying that, you play, praying and thanking, thanking the Lord that, you know, we're safe. Um, and then just with, especially with our five-year-old, our five-year-old understands, she understands, like she was, you know, taken out of school and, and, uh, you know, she, you know, there's questions about her going back in, in September and she says, she, you know, she's scared to go back. Right. Yeah. So, you know, uh, bringing that to the table and just, you know, uh, bringing these uh, insecurities uh, up during prayer to God, you know, and, and leaving it in God's hands. That's the best thing that this the best thing and only thing that we can do right now. So our, our faith during this time is actually has actually grown quite a bit, I would say. Yeah, I agree. It's just it's made us stronger and, and just we know in our heart that God is protecting us, protecting our family, and we just continue to pray that that He will do all His great things for us, and and this this pandemic, this whatever this is, will just disappear, and and everything will be fine. And we we trust the Lord. We know that that will be the outcome. Yeah. Well, the great thing is here we are uh, recording this uh, session on uh, Sunday evening and coming up on Wednesday. Um, uh, we're going to be recording uh, the, the baptism of your little one. Thank you. And so we are so very thrilled to be able to introduce uh, both of you and your family to the rest of the church. I'm going to turn uh, the video now over to uh, Jamie and he is going to lead the baptism. Thank you, thank you both for this. Really looking forward to uh, everything moving forward. Thanks so much, Dwayne. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks so much. Welcome everyone to our first COVID-19 baptism. And uh, we're just very <laughs> excited to be able to do this. We're doing our very best to practice safety because we want to model that and grateful for the Lamorte family uh, who have the courage to have a baptism today. And uh, thank you so much, Debbie and Emilio, for sharing your faith in that interview that we just saw. Um, love that you have named Christ as Lord in your home and your life and see that vibrancy of faith and energy in your girls as, as well. So may God bless you and your family, family today. Uh, I'm, uh, my name's Jamie Holtham, as you know, this is Jen Stinson. Jen is our children's ministry lead and just grateful for her role in our baptism today as well. As we come for baptism, we're reminded of Matthew 19, uh, verse 14, where Jesus says, come to me, all the little children, let them come to me, is love for children. But also Romans 12, 1 to 2, that we've been looking at the, in this service, that we're offered transformation, new life in Christ, to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, the Apostle Paul says, that that new life is available for all of us as we celebrate baptism today. This family, to be sure, but also for each of us, we can have new life in Christ through this gift of baptism, wherever you are today as we experience this, this together. We want to offer a question for our congregation, for those who are worshiping with us today. If we were in person, this is what we would do, and we can still do this online. So as God's people, God's church gathered today, will we be actively concerned for all children and do our very best to make this a community where people of all ages can know the love of Jesus, can grow in faith and live a transformed and new life. And if you will be a part of that, where you are, you can say, yes, I will, or you can type that into the chat room as we worship online together. And now we have a question for the godparents. As godparents, do you commit yourselves today to be praying for this family, to support them 
and to support Liliana and Christiana as well in their faith development. And if you will, please say, yes, I will. Yes, I will. Thank you so much. So Liliana, we are now at the time for your baptism, so we'll come closer for this part if we could. And Debbie and Emilio, as you present Liliana for baptism, do you once again affirm your own faith in Jesus Christ and your intention to keep growing in your faith that you might help Liliana and Christiana grow in theirs as well? We yes, do, we do. Yeah, thank you so yes, much. Do. Thank you so much. I know you do. <laughs> okay. Liliana, it is our privilege today <laughs> to baptize you okay, look, what? in the name of the Father, your Creator. It's okay. It's okay. Jesus Christ, your Savior. Yeah, it's okay. Look. And the Holy Spirit, your friend and enabler. Yes. And we would like to say a, a prayer for Liliana. And if you want to, as family, to put your hand on her and from where you are, if you're in the bubble, you can certainly come and put a hand on Liliana. And as we often do in church, from where you are, you can put your hand up towards Liliana to be a part of this prayer as well. All these worshipers in your homes, <laughs> worshiping together, praying for Liliana today. Oh God, we give you thanks for Liliana and for your promise of new life that having been born of water and your Holy Spirit today, that she and her family would continue to be filled with your abundant life and love in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And as we often do at these times, we want to welcome Liliana into our church community by saying where you are. Liliana, you are a child of God. We welcome you. And if we were together in person, we would applaud at the end of that. So invite us to do that here and where you are. Again, Liliana, Liliana. you are a child, child of, of God. God. We welcome you. We welcome you. <laughs> so Emilio and Debbie, Liliana and Christiana, it is our pleasure to pre um, present you with this Bible. And we hope that it will be a source of, of uh, wisdom and joy in your family as you share stories. There will be stories that she will ask to read over and over again. Yep. And we know that that will be part of the learning and faith development. So we present with you Thank to you, you so this much. Bible and this candle. Look, look, look Lily. Lily. The candle. Look what you've got. <laughs> Look, this is for you. Yeah, that's for you. What do you say? Say thank you. Thank you. Say thank you. Okay, just, you can't break it. Yeah. May the candle be a symbol of God's light and love in your life thank as you, you continue yeah. to celebrate all of yeah, her milestones yeah. with her. Yeah. Thank you. And we do too. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. This is the best You're welcome. So, <laughs> the best baptism ever. Well, let's close with a prayer of celebration and thanks. Thanks, Jamie. God's love and light is something to be shared. And we've just seen Liliana share that with Jamie. I am so grateful that you have come today and that we can be part of this. So let's, let's close in prayer. And we'll, we'll put our hands together and we'll pray. God of love, loving God, thank you. Thank you for the gift of Liliana, for the blessing that she is in her family for all of the ways that they will grow together as followers of Christ, learning to love you and to love each other. We are so grateful for all the ways that you are already present in their lives. Help us as a congregation support and care for them as we come together in community, whether it be from far away or in the rare moments that we can be close together. Thank you, God, for the ways that you are always present with us. With joy and with love, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Wow, I hope you've enjoyed those two so far, but we're not done. We still have one more. Uh, our last one uh, highlights uh, the significant impact that Alpha has had on one of the people that is with us on staff. I know you're going to enjoy Marilyn's story. Well, I've been going to church my whole life with my grandparents and my parents. It's been part of who 
I am, not just the going to church, but my relationship with God. Um, I've been going to North Bramalee for about nine years, and I've been on staff as the office administrator for five. And I recently finished an 11 week Alpha course. And Alpha has been taking place at the church on Wednesdays throughout the year. We had a spring and fall. And I'd be working all day and then see the ladies come in and start putting a meal together. And some people nudged me and said, you know, I think you'd really enjoy Alpha. And I thought about it and thought, no, I, no, I don't think so. Not right now. And then somebody actually extended an invitation to me to attend Alpha. And I still wasn't ready. And then COVID hit and I'm working from home and it was decided to have an online alpha and a daytime alpha and that really interested me and so it has been amazing there were eight of us on the uh, wednesday morning video chat video call and we would watch a video and then we would discuss it and we really became connected it was a great way to connect with others and also a great way to explore my faith, even though it's been part of my, my life for decades. And especially during COVID, when I think people have um, really had the time to reflect on their life and what is important in life, the Alpha conversations really are amazing to help you figure out what is important in life. Is it material things? No, I don't think so. It's love and family and connection with others. And uh, sorry, it's just a really emotional, emotional thing. Alpha has been absolutely amazing. And halfway through Alpha, there's something called the Holy Spirit weekend. In normal times when people would be able to connect together, it would be a Friday evening with a meal and conversation and then going into Saturday as well but this time because we couldn't meet together we met virtually on a Saturday morning and uh, it is all about the Holy Spirit so growing up there was the Trinity the Father the Son and it was called the Holy Ghost because of course you can't see him now we call it the Holy Spirit and it's about letting the Holy Spirit come into your life being open and I think that's why I felt something so much that, that morning. I was open to receiving the Holy Spirit into my life. And after that morning, that whole afternoon into the next day, I just felt this peace that was beyond understanding. I've been very anxious and fearful during this COVID time. And I just felt such a peace. Um, and it's hard to explain. People have gone up to the front of the sanctuary and talked about the Holy Spirit weekend and how wonderful it was and how they were touched. And you can't really explain it properly until you experience it. And I was fortunate enough to experience it. And I have experienced the feeling of the Holy Spirit a few times in my life. Um, and so it's, it's a pretty amazing thing. So what's next for me um, I continue to, to watch for signs, to listen for God's leading and guidance in my life. Um, there are no quick, quick answers in Alpha. Somebody said, you know, you can't get life answers by going on to Google. Listening to God takes time. Um, and it's the signs. And during my life, when I've I did a big daring faith move. Maybe some of you might remember that um, five years ago with a career change and it had to do with now me being at the church, but it was a real leap of faith. And um, there were signs along the way when I look back, whether it be um, there was literally a car in front of me on the 410 ramp pulling a sign that said, don't look back, you're not going that way or a lady on an airplane that I was sitting beside for a couple of hours and we got talking about life and religion. And I said to her, sitting in a cubicle, 
shuffling papers around isn't doing it for me anymore. And that was a real aha moment that what I was doing in my life then wasn't how God wanted me to serve him. So I'm going to continue to, to watch and listen and enjoy the simple things in life. Thanks, Marilyn, for sharing your story. Thank you, Emilio, Debbie, your family, as well as Rebecca for jumping into all of this. Thank you also for choosing to draw close to God. I hope all of you have been impacted by these stories. I hope and pray that, that uh, you will be drawn in and drawn closer. If you have yet to experience this faith in Christ, I hope that you will reach out to one of your online hosts. Um, you can send me an email. We'd love to tell you a little bit about how Christ makes such a difference in your life. Uh, if you want to get signed up for Alpha, we do have uh, sessions coming up. Uh, we're starting on Wednesday, September the 16th at 6.30. Or if uh, evening doesn't work for you, you want to try a daytime Thursday morning, September 17th at 10 a.m. Go to the website. About three quarters of the way down, there's a register now button. Press on that and choose which one that you'll want to take. We are excited about uh, this journey. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. Wow, what incredible stories of transformation with people having encounters with the God's love that is so full and rich and with Jesus' presence and with the power of the Spirit to really change lives from the inside out. Did you notice that powers and stories of transformation are for all ages. It doesn't matter if you're a child or a teen, a young adult, or someone who's in the later stages of life who are wondering what it's all about. God can meet you where you are, sometimes when you're looking, and oftentimes when you're not. And that is the power of God's love that is for all people. Friends, we're going to celebrate that love and the gift of God's presence with us and in us through communion. If you haven't had a chance to go get something to be able to drink and eat together, then go ahead and do that now while we're going to be praying. It can be anything in your house. Today I have a glass of water or a cup of water with some of my favorite prayer cups, and I have some bread as well. But you could have some cookies, you could have some juice, whatever you want to have right now. I know some of you are using some Weetabix cereal, so go ahead and use whatever is handy for you, because it's not what we're taking into our body. It's what God does with all who we are. And this is a meal for all ages. All are welcome, whether you have faith that can move mountains or whether you have doubts that can just fill the universe. We're talking about God, and God can move, and God is moving, moving with you and for you. And so let us join together in prayer. Loving, gracious God, at the very beginning, the words in Genesis remind us of the power, the poetry of your love, where we talked about there being nothing, and your spirit hovered over that nothingness and turned it into something with the words, let there be light. And the light overcame the darkness, and the darkness cannot put it out. And throughout time, you have continued to work with us, your people, you have brought us through hard times of trial. You have accompanied us through suffering and pain. You have been with us in those joyous celebrations. And you are here present with us now. For Jesus came among us, the Word made flesh, who moved into our neighborhoods, into our lives, to show us the power and depth and strength of your love. And we remember that as his disciples were learning and growing about you and how to share your love with others, they brought to Jesus their concerns about prayer. And so they asked him, how do we transform our prayers so that we can pray like you? And he taught them this prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer. And I invite you to join me in it. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, on the night before he died, Jesus gathered with his friends, the men, women, and children who had accompanied him on his journey. And he took some bread, and he gave thanks to God for it. And he broke that bread. And he said to them, take this and eat, all of you. And each time you do this, remember me. And after the meal, he took a cup. And he gave God thanks for that cup of fresh water, of wine, grapes transformed. And he told his friends, love one another as I have loved you. Take and drink. This is a promise made this day that I will be with you always. And my love can transform your life. And so we eat together of some bread and whatever is in your cup. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the you, the people of God. May our lives live in the power of God's love and be transformed into who God already sees you to be. Let us go out into the world refreshed and renewed, transformed. Amen. God of love, we pray for our children. Those kids heading back to school, whether it be in person or online or some combination of the two. School comes with excitement of first days jitters. And this year it looks different. But different doesn't have to be bad or sad or scary. Different can be good. We know, God, that you will find moments of blessing in all of it. And God, I pray that you would bless our children to help them become who they are meant to be. Would you bless them so that they can be a blessing to others? so that they can be that shining light in their classrooms. In the moments where they feel unsure, God, hold them close. Remind them that unsure is okay. That in all, everything that we are learning, there is the power of yet. We may not know yet, but we're growing and learning. Help our schools become places of community and of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Loving God, when the world changes, you do not change and you remain faithful. We pray for high school students returning to schools that will be very different, that won't be able to interact with friends as much, uh, where extracurriculars aren't happening um, and yet the expectations to stay and study are going to continue. Help them adjust to the new reality, to know that through the stress, you are still there with them and give them the strength to make it through things. We pray for students in university, especially those going for the first time, whose expectations are very different from the reality of what they're meeting. Be their comfort, their guide, uh, help them through this season and know that they are loved and there is so much still to look forward to. Dear God, as the start of a new school year gets closer, we ask that you come alongside all those parents to help ease some of the fear and anxiety that so many are facing. 
whether they have made the decision to have their children return to school or opt for online learning or some other alternative, help them to find comfort knowing that whatever they decide, it is the right decision for them and their family, and that you are right there with them, holding them by their right hand. We know that parents are often overwhelmed by the demands of working outside the home, running a household, and sometimes looking after elderly or sick parents. So help us to show grace and kindness to one another, to hold each other up, and to help our brothers and sisters where we can. Help us to love in the way that you first loved us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Awesome. What a great Sunday. We thank you so much for joining us. We've really enjoyed hearing all these stories of transformation and thank everyone who offered to share their stories with us today. We're really inspired and and ready to move forward into September. Kind of crazy we're in September, but it's definitely inspiring us to move forward. And we want to thank Debbie for beautiful communion time. Like what a great service we've had today. (laughs) Absolutely. And we're certainly praying for those who are going back to school this week because uh, yeah, that follows Labor Day and this is is so different this year. So as we uh, move into a, a blessing to close our service, we'll certainly include those are all uh, who are imp- impacted by going back to school. And then, and then after the blessing, please hang on for an amazing Alpha interview. You won't want to miss that just after the blessing. But let's pray as we close today. Loving and gracious God, uh, again, we thank you for the ways that you have been moving through this service for our experience of of you today, for that promise of transformation and new life in Christ. May all of us receive that as we move into this coming week. We pray especially for those who are going back to school, for teachers and all those involved in the school systems, for parents and students, and just especially with the challenges that this year brings. Give them your deep peace that surpasses all understanding. May your Holy Spirit be with them and all of us as we head into this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, friends. Have a great week. Enjoy this interview. I'd like to introduce you to Jen. Jen took the Alpha course this past spring, and she had an amazing experience. And she's going to share her story with you now. Jen, take it away. Thanks. Thank you for having me here. I am. Um, I'm happy to share. I'm new with the church. I um, I was kind of during these last couple of years feeling a little bit lost, and um, you know, even though I'm married, I have a career. I'm a teacher in the school board, but since having um, I've changed jobs recently, I've changed roles. Um, I sometimes wondering like, what am I supposed to be doing, and my husband and I were a childless couple, and uh, we've learned to live with that and accept that. Uh, and but there's always this um, thing that I, I was missing something and, and felt a little bit lost. And I'd have all these questions. And my mom attends this church, and I was viewing uh, the service with her, and I saw this Alpha commercial. I'm like, oh, well, maybe I should try that. I didn't have any expectations. I'm like, you know, I'm asking all these questions. COVID time. I'm, you know, feeling down, but need to be lifted up, I guess. And and I was looking for a spiritual connection. So I'm like, oh, let's see what happens. And so I took the course and with my mom, and I really appreciated being able to answer some of the questions that I was having. And a lot of it was uh, to do with uh, purpose. And I... Um, enjoyed having the small group where we were able to uh, ask each other questions and we were able to talk about uh, different things about Jesus. I think the biggest thing was like learning about Jesus and, and his love. And um, I, I felt that. And like I can honestly say before, I didn't have um, faith. Uh, but now after taking the Alpha course, I definitely believe in Jesus. I believe in God. Um, now, like I pray every day. I um, try to read the Bible every day. I try. Um, and, you know, I, I view the service every Sunday. And now I, I look at, like, my work and teaching, like, um, having Jesus' love and sharing sharing that. 
um, and I look at our community and I look at things differently and, and I'm a lot more at peace and settled than I was uh, before the course. So I'm grateful that I took the Alpha course. Thank you, Jen. That's just a wonderful story. Really appreciate hearing it. Thank you. I just want to tell you a little bit about what's going to happen next Sunday. I'm going to interview a Brampton firefighter, a man, a black man, who will share his experience around racism over the years. It is going to be very powerful. It's such an important conversation that we all need to have together. So we really hope you can join us. Spread the word. We'd love for more people to be part of this conversation next Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hope to see you next week. 